ready to go local live on this rainy, cold Friday afternoon, the first bad weather we've had in quite a while. Uh, thanks for joining us. I want to thank Dr. Fine for going over today's number. We had 710 new cases on limited statewide testing. These data points come from Wednesday, Veterans Day, the holiday. So uh, cases were down, so was testing, um, not as proportional. And uh, we're waiting for the college numbers to, to reduce the amount of testing accordingly and get you the real numbers of what's going on in the state of Rhode Island. But needless to say, the numbers continue to grow and the infections continue to spread across the state. Um, let's go to Balzano, Italy. Rebecca Cotto da Silva, thank you so much for joining us on a Friday afternoon here, a Friday night in Italy. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Okay, Italy is getting, uh, United States recorded a record 160,000 new cases yesterday. Italy's got 40,000 new cases. Um, uh, talk about what's going on in Italy and what the response from the government has been. Yeah, so the response from the government is really, uh, I think it's somewhat frustrating to the people that live here because you know that there is a sort of a three week lag in infection and then people presenting as very ill. So it takes about two weeks to develop something that you would consider a very noticeable symptom. And then after a week, you're like, okay, maybe I should get treated for this. So just in terms of the bulk of the people getting sick, there's that big three week lag and then we're getting new rules every three days. And it's just like, yeah, of course, three days later, seven days later, even 10 days later, um, you're not seeing much of a change because what happened is that you, um, you know, you didn't wait for your rules to take effect before making new rules. So we actually have lots and lots of different rules now nationally. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're classified into three zones, um, yellow, orange, and red. And then, you know, Within certain limits, each governor can make further restrictions uh, to the zone. So we're actually, for example, in a yellow zone. So we should be able to have things like um, most of most of the kids in school, actually all through the eighth grade in school with um, instruction, live instruction, and we don't. As of next week, there's a week off of school for everyone except students with special needs and children of high need workers. Um, so that's one of those things where, you know, Italy says, yes, yes, you're in a yellow zone. You can, um, you can operate schools. And our governor says, no, it's, it's too much. Um, some things that do seem to apply pretty much nationally are a, a curfew from 10 to five. Uh, I think I mentioned before that they said you, all bars have to close by a certain hour, so they'd close for an hour. <laughs> so now there's a, a full curfew from 10 to 5 for yellow and orange, and then I believe red zone people can't even leave the house at all. We're back to signing out the paper and declaring it. The city where I live, Bolzano, is actually, actually we're all in a red zone now, but before Bolzano was declared a red zone, before we were... And so I actually, I've been down there, I think, every day this week because I've had pressing business. Um, and so I've had to do that declaration and, um, you know, I've had to been able to, you know, I've had to go out with a justification of necessity, urgency, work or health. Um, so it's pretty, things are pretty tight here, yeah. specifically. What's been, what's what, what's been the reaction, uh, you know, to folks in Italy? This is, you know, this is the big second wave, and how are folks dealing with it? Are they, do they see that it's important to public health, or are they, you know, grimacing at government intervention? Yeah, well, you know, one thing that's happening is um, you just kind of feel like there's sort of a moving target. So we've got these huge numbers today, we had 250,000 tests. And a couple of weeks ago, we were doing 70,000 tests a day. And so you, if you have the same rate of infection from 
you know, uh, 70,000 tests a day to 250,000 tests a day, that's a lot more. That's three times more. And so you get people, you know, saying, oh, these raw numbers are so bad. And then you have other people saying, so for example, in my province, it was test everybody. You need to walk through the hospital doors for whatever reason. You're gonna do your eye exam. You're going to get an ultrasound. Whatever reason you're using this public health test system, you're getting a test. So our numbers really went up. And then they changed the rule to only people who are symptomatic get a test, um, which means you almost nobody is getting a test. And so then we get this thing, one out of two people in the region are being tested, are, are, are testing positive. And so it's just like, you know, you just have this sense of, we really don't know how bad the crisis is. And nobody's really saying, okay, what's our bed capacity? What's this capacity? What's that capacity? And so people are upset. I think you saw weeks ago, there were riots. And um, it's just one of those things where you just really don't know what's happening. And the rules change every day. Yeah, and, right. you know, like this whole closure that's happening now was supposed to be a two week closure. And then I think Italy rattled its saber a little bit and said, well, you can't deny people their rights to say, okay, one week closure. So what's actually happening here is kind of interesting. They're going to do a mass test um, next weekend and uh, everyone has to get tested basically. And as of now, if you refuse to get tested or you don't show up, you can't work anymore. You yeah. won't be able to, to do your job. So that's something that's obviously probably going to take around in the courts. There's, there's going to be a challenge to that, I think. But that's one thing, you know, we've got curfews. I can't go out now to a clothes store, um, kitchen store, any anything like that. It's We're down to essentials that are open. And then there are people who are in the red zones that absolutely can't go out at all during the day, um, not even 500 meters from their house, 500 yards. And are they uh, uh, utilizing citations again, giving you a ticket for 500 euros if you're caught in violation of one of the new rules? Yeah, so one thing I saw, with, so that will, it's 400 for the first time, I think 500 another, it scales up the more tickets you get. That's, that's real money just for, uh, for, for purposes of US, uh, you know, more than, more than Five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's one point two right now. One point one eight, one point two. Yeah. So, and then you can knock down about what a quarter of it if you pay it within a few days, which is like, oh yes, of course. <laughs> Here's the three hundred fifty bucks. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm in a national yellow zone that our governor has declared a red zone. And what I, I am not seeing a lot of enthusiasm to enforce the rules. I've been walking around, um, you know, one day looking pretty sharp with an older over the shoulder bag, another day with the backpack on, um, and I've clearly like had some done some shopping also. Uh, so like, I went down for a blood draw for my sort of annual exams, and on the way back I stopped in a supermarket. And, um, you know, I bought things that are not available in my village to keep it all on the up because I really don't want to pay 500 just to save, you know, 10 bucks at the store. So, um, but, you know, it, the way I'm walking around could look like, you know, why is she getting on a long distance bus with groceries? I haven't really seen that people are really out to cite you. But on one of the first days of the lockdown in Bolzano, before it became a province-wide lockdown, someone got cited for drinking coffee. So now all bars and restaurants are closed and everything is to go. So you get your coffee to go, drink it on the street. No, consumption in public is absolutely forbidden. And, you know, so you've got this elderly woman being threatened to get a citation, a 500 euro cite or 400 euro citation for drinking in public. And there's a guy standing next to her smoking and it's completely legal. And it's like, <laughs> you know, the action of drinking is much more inward 
And then the action of smoking is actually blowing out respiratory droplets everywhere. Right, and no and it's just, Yeah, yeah, and so it's like, and, and you have, you've said that people can't even, you know, and Italians don't really have this habit of eating on the go, but if you shut the bars and they want their morning coffee, you know, you're gonna drink it on the go. And so it's just one of those things where I think that they got such bad press for that. And it was just like, okay, let's, um, you know, let's be reasonable, but the, the rules and the tickets are real. So it's one of those things that I went down Tuesday for a medical reason, that medical reason, I went down on Thursday to pick up my residence permit. And then I had an appointment to enroll Olympia in the health, renew her uh, enrollment in the health system today, right? And all of those reasons are compelling reasons, but um, I could see, for example, like the appointment today, I really don't have any proof of that. I have a prescription with me for the blood draw. I have a document with me for the immigration service. I could see them, you know, I could see having to get into a discussion and maybe, you know, being at risk for the third thing is a completely valid reason, but I was much more on edge going down today than I was the other two days. Re so, Rebe it, Rebecca, mm -hmm. tell me, it, 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 how long are, are these restrictions now in place? Are they expected to last a week or two or a month or two? You know, at first, so the nice thing is, is that first Italy just said, these are the restrictions and they exist until we say they don't exist. And so you had that, you know, basically that ban, for example, on uh, Olympia's data entering the country for so long. And it's just like, when is it gonna stop? We don't know. Here they've actually given a date and I think it's around Thanksgiving, but you know, they keep extent. So Olympia school was supposed to be closed for two weeks. Now it's closed for one week. And, um, you know, it was supposed to be that the testing was voluntary. Now it's compulsory. And it's just one of those things that, yeah, these restrictions are basically the date that I've heard a lot is December 2nd. Um, there is an expiration date late dis November, early December. But I don't think that that's going to be like, OK, everyone back to work the way that we were when the numbers were going up. Um, I hope that they figure out why the numbers went up, because a lot of the places where you'd expect to see clusters, you really weren't. Middle schools were not middle schools and elementary schools. And I think to some extent, high schools were not where you were seeing clusters. Sports were not where you were seeing clusters. Um, my guess is that it was restaurants, right? But that's a guess. And so it would be nice if they could figure out what's happening and, uh, uh, and tailor, yeah. Um, last question. When Olympia goes back to school, not Monday, but a week from Monday, do you as a parent, do the other parents think, well, this will get us through till Christmas? Or do you think school will be interrupted again and you'll go back to online learning? Um, you know, they're, they've got this big test that they're going to do for everyone at the end of the weekend. And so it's one of those things where it was nice for me personally, um, because they had said everyone through sixth grade is going to stay in in-person instruction. And then they canceled even that for the week. Um, but they do have a sense that the younger you are, the more you need in-person instruction. So, and like sixth graders, especially because I think seventh and eighth graders got to know each other as sixth graders, but sixth graders are sort of in this new world. It would be, I think, nice also if the um, freshmen would have that same sort of courtesy. They were trying to do that in the university where even freshman university students would have in-person instruction, but then the rule comes down from high. No, it's going to be a certain age cut off. But um, yeah, I don't think anyone really knows. I mean, you shrug your shoulders and be cynical and say they're gonna close it down forever or say they. we hope they figure it out. One thing that's clear is that parents here are very upset about the lack of in-person instruction. It's culturally very significant thing. Um, 
So it's not something, I think in the U.S. there's this push of a lot of parents to keep their kids at home and to do distance learning. Here it's, no, I want my child in front of a teacher. That is what the public education system's for. Yeah, absolutely. I think same frustration here in the U.S. Rebecca, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you taking the time on a, on a Friday night in, uh, in Italy uh, to join us and give us uh, some insights into what's going on there. Uh, obviously, Italy seems to be just two to three weeks ahead of the United States in uh, cycles relating to the coronavirus and 40,000 cases in a country of uh, under 30 million people is a remarkable number. U.S., 330 million people, 160,000, so more than 10 times the population, uh, but only four times the amount of, of cases here in the U.S. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Please stay safe. Uh, good luck with the, the week off from school and uh, uh, keep us updated. We'll try and touch base next week as well, get back on a regular schedule now that we're through the election cycle and, uh, and your academic work uh, fluxes. So uh, thank you so much. And for everybody else, stay tuned. The new numbers are out. We're just finishing the analysis with the college numbers. Obviously, there's some significant outbreaks around the state, including the prison system which has seen over 100 cases last week, 53 or 55 in maximum security alone. The Ivy League has announced it's the first Division I sports league to, uh, in the NCAAs to cancel all winter sports. So lots happening. Everybody, please stay safe, save a job, save a business, wear your mask. Thank you.